Hi, I'm Monica and let's talk about the books that surprised me the most this year. 2022 has been an interesting reading year for me because I have been branching out to read more genres and other types of books that I don't usually pick up. And so I made this video to see which books have surprised me or really some hidden gems that I have not realized that were really good. So let's just hop right in into the first book. The City of Brass by S.A. Chakaborty. This one is an adult fantasy and explores racial and religious tensions, ruling clan warfare, as well as a bunch of Jin mythology and history. We have two point of views in this book that show us two different perspectives and sides of the Jin world. First, we have Nari, who is a Shafit. That means she's half human, half Jin. And right now, she's living in Cairo, Egypt and making her living off of robbing rich men. From her, we learn how an outsider is being introduced to the Jin world known as Davabad. Second, we have Ali, who is a Deva prince or a Jin prince who lives in Davabad. And from his side, we see the religious and political influences and tensions that are happening in this Jin world. Even though the world building was a little bit tough to get through, but I absolutely loved learning about this rich and lush world that the author created. So much Jin magic and centuries of history. The author made it very in-depth and rich. I'm very impressed by that. And I really love how our characters are not without flaws and we see how they learn and grow throughout the book. There's also wonderful Muslim representation, Middle Eastern settings, and we also get main POC characters, which is always a plus. So I really am interested to continue this series. Next up is The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. And I read this entire trilogy this year and it really did surprise me as a YA mystery thriller type of series. In this one, we're following Avery who overnight becomes a teenage heiress to billions because of a dead billionaire, Tobias Hawthorne making her the sole heir to his fortune. And the only caveat to her getting this fortune is that she has to live in the Hawthorne house with the four grandsons of Tobias Hawthorne for one year before she gets her money. The twist in this book is that this entire scheme and plot of Avery becoming the heiress is that she has to solve many riddles, many puzzles to get to the bottom of whatever is happening here. I had so much fun with this trilogy. It's really fast paced, there's short chapters, and you very much fall in love with the characters very quickly. And it is definitely a lighter read and we have five geniuses that solve the puzzles for you. I was pleasantly surprised by how quickly I got sucked in into Avery and the Hawthorne Brothers world of luxury and solving all these clues and puzzles. It was very easy to want to know the answer behind why Avery was chosen. This is definitely a book that would get you out of a reading slump and if you really enjoy a teenage girl being thrown into the world of the mega rich and also rich sad boys and also being a teenage heiress overnight and I'm very very much anticipating the next book in this type of world which is the Brothers Hawthorne coming out in 2023 so Super excited for that. The next surprising book on my list is a historical fiction romance and this is Bringing Down the Duke by E.B. Dunmore. This one we're following Annabelle Archer who is part of the first class of female students attending Oxford and her love interest is Lord Sebastian Montgomery. This romance is a slow burn and a hint of forbidden romance between a commoner and one of the nobility. I was not expecting to be so engrossed into this book but then realizing my love for like Bridgerton and Outlander being historical fiction, TV shows, it was no wonder why this book really captured my attention. There was also coverage of the women's suffrage movement and I would have liked to see more of that but overall this book was like a breath of fresh air for me and it was very enjoyable to read. Next up was a dark academia book which is The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. In this one we're following a group of six inseparable young adults who are in a competition to gain a place in the society which means they will gain access to the archives of the Alexandrian library and ultimately they will earn a life of wealth, privilege, and power. But the catch of initiation is that only five will make it and one will be eliminated. 
Again, another book that I was surprised by because I've heard all the characters are very unlikable and very hard to like, but I did find that I did enjoy that aspect. I like that I wanted to figure out why each of these characters would go to such far lengths to join the society. We also dive in quite deep into our characters past goals as well as personalities because we are reading from six different points of views. The world building was somewhat weak but I really love that there's this relentless pursuit of knowledge with all of our characters and seeing how far all of these characters will go to achieve their desires and I will definitely take a small break before picking up the sequel to this one. Another first for me this year was to read more romances and I really enjoyed the Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. So this one is a STEM-based romance that we have a lot of slow burn romance, fake dating, and academic rivals. We follow Olive who is a PhD candidate and she's currently working in a research lab. And she finds herself in a fake dating situation with a young hotshot professor, Adam Carlson, in order to maintain a facade that she is actually dating someone to her best friend, An. I think what really surprised me about this book was that it was very easy to read and really easy to get into Olive's and Adam's relationship. Adam himself as a love interest was okay, but I think the chemistry and the banter were top notch and that's why I really loved this book so much. Olive and Adam both have their issues, but then they slowly learn to overcome them by the end of this book. And I really can't wait to read more from Ellie Hazelwood. Next up is a YA fantasy romance, which is Belladonna by Adeline Grace. This one, I wasn't really sure what to expect, but then after reading more into it, it really is a love story between our main character, Signa, and Death. And it may sound a little bit strange, but it was very well thought out and developed. <laughs> While growing up, Signa has had this mysterious connection to Death and with her guardians mysteriously dying all around her, she's left all alone as an orphan until she's then sent to her relatives, the Hawthorns, and in this place, she finds out that her aunt may have been actually murdered and not just passed away. Signa can also see spirits and she also gets pulled into solving her aunt's murder alongside with the help of death. Signa isn't normal, she's very buddy-buddy with death and she also has some powers that have been granted to her from her interaction and close relationship with death. And really, I had a, such a fun time with the murder mystery and also the budding relationship between Signa and death. Also, the characterization of death was quite nice. He is charming, mysterious, he is quite charismatic, and he gives off the whole I'm a lonely immortal vibe. The relationship also didn't feel forced. It was quite natural, really, and that was what surprised me, and I was very much enjoying that aspect of the book. With Signa and Death, this is what the type of relationship I wanted from Annie LaRue and Luke, and I definitely cannot wait to read the sequel. Last on my list is The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. This one is my first book by this author, and this one is about Hannah Brooks, who is a female bodyguard, and she is assigned to protect a high-profile Hollywood actor, Jack Stapleton. We're set at Jack's family ranch because his mother is sick, and meanwhile, Jack does have a stalker, but in order to keep up appearances, Hannah then poses as Jack's fake girlfriend. This one was very much a rom-com and I actually laughed out loud several times throughout this book and I really don't laugh as much as I read because I read very serious books, I think, with fantasy and all of the serious topics in them. So this rom-com is very lighthearted and I very much enjoyed reading this romance. Even with all the over-the-top moments, I felt it was perfect for like a good vacation read or even a road trip book. And some tropes that we get in here is fake dating, forced proximity, and a very swoony romance. So those were all the books that really surprised me this year and comment down below with any books that surprised you this year. And I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.